Voilà. Il faut que vous fermiez la porte, là, s'il vous plaît. Et vous disiez à ma secrétaire euh, la porte à clé. Et vous dites à ma secrétaire qu'on ne nous dérange pas pendant l'interview. Et donc, euh, ce qui est parfois difficile à comprendre du côté britannique, c'est que nous ne voulons pas négocier, nous ne voulons pas transiger, nous ne voulons pas euh, euh, compromettre ce que nous sommes et qu'ils veulent quitter. C'est leur choix de quitter. Michel Barnier est la voix des 27 pays dans l'Union Union's Brexit negotiations. The future rights of 500 million citizens and a trading bloc worth hundreds of billions are riding on the deal his team strikes with the UK. A former French foreign minister, he's taken a hard line in the negotiations. The clock is ticking. Huh? There will be no business as usual. And shown a unique talent for trolling the British. Ça, c'est un livre sur un autre homme que j'admire beaucoup, qui est uh, Churchill. Churchill était uh, très européen. Hein? Less than a year before Brexit, Vice News went exclusively behind the scenes with Barnier to check in on the status of the world's strangest divorce settlement. Several times a week, Barnier leaves EU headquarters in Brussels to travel around Europe and speak to two very separate audiences. No, what must be yes after that here? Yeah. Uh, The first are the millions of Europeans who've entrusted him to make the best Brexit deal possible. It's not only about negotiating between officials in Brussels or London. It's all about the people, about the business, about the stakeholders. So I, I think that this negotiation cannot be secret. Of course, for a Frenchman speaking primarily to Europe, it's no accident that many of his speeches are in precisely constructed English. He knows the second audience listening in is the British press, which dissects his every word. Is it closing doors or uh, make choice? Closing doors, of course, also implies it's their will, but there you have the stronger message of, okay, they are making sure that certain things are not possible. With the UK still divided over key parts of its own position, repeating the same few phrases. It cannot be business as usual. Tinged with a touch of doom. The time is short, the clock is ticking. Is a deliberate part of Barnier's strategy for presenting a united European front. This is their red lines, not our red lines. In Brussels, his ability to keep Britain on edge has made Barnier the star of Brexit. Hello, you want to have collect the photograph, yes, please? <laughs> thank you. Perfect, thank you. Thank you very much. You can't do politics without uh, this contact with the people, huh? Totally impossible, huh? Behind closed doors, Barnier leads more than 30 advisors and technocrats, divided into different areas of EU policy. I mean, they promised to send me something by the end of last week, and I haven't received okay. anything. Remind them. Together, they fix the EU's position on each aspect of the breakup, meeting monthly with their British counterparts to try to find common ground. It's slow, methodical, the very definition of bureaucratic, and Barnier loves it. Le Conseil, donc c'est un travail quotidien d'évaluation des problèmes techniques, juridiques, financiers, économiques qui sont posés par la décision britannique. Quand on a travaillé avec la délégation britannique sur le draft treaty, nous avons travaillé, vous avez travaillé l'équipe trois jours et deux nuits complètes. Et ça, c'était pas évident, donc c'était beaucoup de, de stress. There have been major breakthroughs. The two sides settled on the cost of the so-called divorce bill, the roughly 53 billion dollars the UK will pay to buy itself out of its obligations to Europe. There's also an agreement to guarantee the rights of Europeans living in the UK and vice versa, as well as a transition period that lasts until December 2020, giving everyone more time to work out a future trade relationship. Le document principal, pour le moment où nous sommes, jusqu'au mois d'octobre, c'est ce draft treaty. Et nous avons fait un travail de coloriage. 
Et euh, sur environ 75% de ce texte, aujourd'hui, euh, nous sommes dans le vert. Et évidemment, ce qui reste, 25%, c'est le plus difficile et le plus sensible là où il y a des risques au moment où je vous parle. Where the sides disagree, though, they disagree a lot. Should European courts or UK courts have the power to enforce the deal? How should Northern Ireland, part of the United Kingdom, interact with the Irish Republic, part of the European Union? The entire deal, transition and all, will collapse if there isn't agreement on everything. C'est un no deal. Il n'y a pas de transition. Et ça, c'est le cliff edge. Et beaucoup de problèmes pour tout le monde. A final risk to the exit treaty is the elected officials themselves. Barnier needs to sell his deal to the people who are technically his bosses, the government and elected representatives of 27 EU countries. So I have this meeting once per week with this Brexit group, a small group of uh, very key parliamentarians. To get the approval of the parliament, you, you must not wait for the, at the end of the, the process. You have to build every day, all along the roads, all along the process, you have to build the trust. Bonjour, vous allez bien? Bonjour, madame. Oui. Bien. These private weekly briefings are a key part of the strategy to keep the EU 27 united. The situation politique britannique uh, assez volatile. Uh, je, je recommande que nous restions très unis et uh, clairs sur uh, nos objectifs et nos principes. Un mot maintenant sur la question des douanes que les Britanniques avancent avec plusieurs idées. Ils ont deux propositions dont débattent actuellement uh, les ministres britanniques, notamment de Aucune de ces deux propositions n'est opérationnelle et acceptable par nous. Indeed, I agree with you that, I mean, the two options of custom are totally unacceptable. Barnier is among the favourites to become the next president of the EU in 2019, meaning he would personally oversee the future relationship between the EU and the newly independent UK. Ce travail n'est pas terminé. Euh, il y a cette première étape de traiter sur le divorce. Mais le plus important, c'est la relation future qui va prendre plusieurs années après. Ça, c'est le plus important. Mais je n'ai, au moment où je vous parle, je n'ai aucune certitude. Euh, et je vois bien la, la difficulté, l'intensité de ce débat. Mais, mais nous, nous attendons du côté britannique euh, euh, des positions claires, des choix. C'est la décision britannique de quitter l'Union qui crée le problème. Personne d'autre. Rien d'autre. 